Hello everybody, my name is Janine Sanders and I'm going to read you this book, Hope, written by me and illustrated by Vivian Minica. Jonathan had everything he needed. He had food to eat, clothes to wear, a scooter to ride and a mother and father. But Jonathan's home was not a happy one. Sometimes there was shouting and sometimes there was yelling. Sometimes there was hitting and often there were tears. In the evening, when, jo when his father's heavy boots stomped up the path, Jonathan's mother would tell him to run quickly to his room and close the door. But no matter how much he blocked his ears or pretended it wasn't happening, Jonathan could always hear. Curled up on his bed and alone, Jonathan would often blame himself. Maybe if he'd put his toys away. Maybe if he'd eaten all his vegetables. Maybe then his father wouldn't be so angry. Some nights when his father had finally staggered into bed, Jonathan would creep down the stairs and hold his mother's hand. He wished he had a super pow superhero powers so he could keep her safe. But Jonathan wasn't a superhero. He was just a little boy. As the weeks turned into months, nothing changed and Jonathan felt his worries and his sadness would stretch on forever. But then something did change. Auntie Edie arrived. She came into the house in a scurry of skirts and scarves. She brought with her a large brown suitcase and a cat called Magic. Jonathan, she cooed as she bent down to shake his hand. You've grown so much. Jonathan looked up at the tall woman with the big smile. Her face looked familiar, but he wasn't sure. It's my birthday on Sunday, he replied. I'll be seven. Ooh, said Auntie Edie, you are growing up. Are you having cake? Jonathan looked towards his mo mother. She returned his gaze with a smile and a nod. Ooh, repeated Auntie Edie, I love cake. And so for three glorious days, Auntie Edie stayed and there was calm in Jonathan's house. The yelling stopped, the shouting stopped, and the hitting stopped. The birds sang and the crickets chirped. There were tears, but they were tears of laughter. Jonathan's father went to work early and returned at dinner time. He never ever said one angry word when Auntie Edie was in the house. Auntie Edie and Jonathan's mother spent hours together laughing and drinking tea. They looked at old photos and hugged and laughed some more. For the first time in months, Jonathan went to school with a bounce in his step. The house seemed brighter and cheerier and Jonathan was happier than he had been for a very long time. The day before Jonathan's birthday, Aunt Edie knocked on his door. May I come in, she asked, as she peeked around the corner. Jonathan nodded. Now she smiled her lovely, big, warm smile. What would my favorite nephew like for his birthday? Jonathan sat quietly on his bed, magic by his side. I'd like you to stay forever, he replied. Forever is a very long time, Auntie Edie said. Please, please don't go, begged Jonathan. If you go, the shouting and the hitting will start again. Maybe, she said, but there is always hope that things might change. Nothing will change, said Jonathan. When you leave, everything will be the same and it's my fault. 
Auntie Edie reached for his hand. Now Jonathan, she said, looking deep into his eyes. I want you to listen to me very carefully. Children are never, ever to blame for grown-ups anger. The hitting and the shouting are not your fault, Jonathan. I know you are sad and I know you are scared, she continued. So together we are going to work out a plan to keep you and your mother safe. You can always call me if you feel unsafe and I will get here as soon as I can. Or you can always call the police. It's their job to help children who feel unsafe. Jonathan nodded. Now, said Auntie Edie, smiling, can I have a big hug? And remember, Jonathan, there is always hope that things might change. But hope seemed a long way away on the morning of Jonathan's birthday. He woke to the sounds of yelling and shouting coming from the kitchen. With magic by his side, he tiptoed down the stairs and peeked around the kitchen door. His birthday cake lay in a mushy mess on the floor. His mother was slumped in a chair, his aunt protectively by her side. Jonathan watched as his father shook his fist and yelled terrible words. Then he turned on his heel and he pushed open the front door with such force that it fell off its hinges. The family car roared into action and Jonathan's father sped away. Just then, magic slipped through the kitchen door and began to lap up the pink icing. Oh, Jonathan, cried his mother as she turned to see her young son half hidden behind the kitchen door. I'm so sorry. Jonathan drifted over to his mother, careful not to step in the cake. It's okay, he soothed. There's always hope that things might change. And things did change. Auntie Edie had a plan. Bags were quickly packed, toys and books were gathered, and a big yellow taxi arrived to take Jonathan and his mother to Auntie Edie's house. Welcome, Jonathan, said Uncle Ed kindly. Jonathan looked at the big man with the bushy beard. His face looked familiar, but he wasn't sure. You can stay as long as you like, he said with a warm smile. Jonathan hoped Auntie Edie and Uncle Ed's house would be safe and a happy place. And it was. There was no shouting, there was no yelling, and there was no hitting. Words were spoken with respect and kindness. Uncle Ed and Auntie Edie listened to each other and spoke to everyone they met with respect and warmth. Jonathan and his mother stayed for two weeks. They were happy weeks, but deep down in his heart, Jonathan missed his home. So one sunny Sunday morning, once again, Jonathan and his mother packed their bags. There were tears and hugs as they all gathered on the veranda to say goodbye. Jonathan gave Magic one last tickle under her chin and stroked her tail. Auntie Edie squeezed Jonathan tight and looked into his eyes. I am so proud of you, Jonathan, she smiled. And we both love you very much. If you ever need us, we are here for you. Just use your safety plan and call me and I will come over as soon as I can. Never feel like you have to work things out on your own. Jonathan smiled up at Auntie Edie and Uncle Ed. He felt less worried and the tight knot in his stomach had nearly disappeared. He knew now he had trusted grown-ups he could tell anything to and they would help him. <coughs> a, big <coughs> a big yellow taxi pulled up in front of the house and took Jonathan and his mother back home. 
In the weeks that followed, things were better for a while. Jonathan's father got some help and the yelling and hitting didn't happen nearly as much. And even though Jonathan was only seven, he had learnt some important things. There is always hope that things might change. There are grown-ups who can help children if they feel unsafe. When grown-ups get very angry, it is never a child's fault. People need to show each other kindness and respect. People need to use words, not fists, to work problems out. And that we can all make a choice about the kind of person we want to be. Many years later, when Jonathan had grown into a young man, he went to visit Auntie Edie and Uncle Ed with his own family. He was tall and strong, but he was also kind, caring and respectful. Jonathan had chosen to be a good man. He, had, he never shouted, he never yelled and he never hit. As a little boy, Jonathan had hoped things would change. Now, as a young man, he knew he was that change. And that's the end of the story. Thank you.